Hello everyone and welcome to TV Talks, a show where I take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer. If I sound kind of mixed up right now, there's a very good reason. Such a big reason that I'm even taking a break from the four kids lineup to talk about this. This is really important and I never ever thought I would say this again, but has Modern Family gotten good again? I think so. I actually think that the show has actually gotten good again. I don't know what's happening, but you know what? Let's start from the beginning. Ever since 2009, Modern Family has been delighting all the audiences that watch it, making them fall in love with the characters, laughing along with the humor, and just getting really invested in the story. Until season 6. Seasons 6, 7, and 8 were absolutely despised by both fans and the general public. It's no coincidence, I think, that after season 5 ended, they stopped winning the Emmys and won nothing except ire, contempt, and declining ratings. Throughout everything they tried to do, all those awful new characters like Andy or the LaFontaines or Rainier Shine or all those one-offs who they expected to be really popular or all those story arcs that never went anywhere and the character derailment and everything just went horribly wrong. So ABC was rumored to have slated season 9 to be the last one. However, it has been renewed again, and I was absolutely baffled as to why, because even the people behind it saying that they're running out of ideas. But, season 9 rolled around, and we're about 7 episodes into it, and I gotta say, it's really good. Like, I wouldn't say it's as good as seasons 2, 3, or 4, but I'd say it's around season 1 or 5 quality, and that is very good still. They're climbing up very quickly. There are still a couple problems, and I'll get to those towards the end, but let's talk about what's changing. First of all, the characters are back to normal. Claire's whole alcoholism thing that they added in is now gone. Jay's obsessive love for Stella the dog has only gotten one mention, not focus, one mention. Manny being off to college has kind of realigned him and given him some new development. Although he hasn't changed, even back I'd argue in seasons 6, 7, and 8, he's a lot more developed now and he gets some more angles, specifically in the first one, the lake one, where he tries to reinvent himself and although it's treated as a joke, we get some really deep development with him. That he's scared of going off to college and having a new group of people reject him. There's this really sad quote he gives that's, you can't make fun of slash isolate a man that you don't know. So, yeah, that was a pretty big one. Luke is actually getting less screen time, which I think is fine, but what they're doing with him is actually funny. While the character is still a bit of a Chris Griffin ripoff, they're actually giving him some cool stuff to do. Alex is still atrocious. You cannot fix Alex. Ever since season 5, she has been awful. And I will get to that when we get to the few problems. Haley is actually smarter again. I mean, Haley has never really been the sharpest knife in the thing where they keep the knives, but Haley was getting dumber earlier in season six, and then just escalated even further. The only reason that she had a brain was, well, when she was making fun of Andy and then using that for the whole will they, won't they thing that everyone knew would happen. But I was surprised that they'd break up, and well, not so much surprised as I was happy. But now she's, she's still dumb, but she's not as, like, hopelessly brain-dead as she used to be. She can actually function as a member of society. Mitchell is no longer the butt monkey. Mitchell is back to his old snobby, persnickety self. And Cam no longer thinks he's Jesus and no longer flaunts around his ego. Now, while he does have the ego, certainly, that's always been a Cam thing, he's no longer malicious about it, he's no longer evil, he no longer has to be the center of attention at all times. Lily is still snarky and lovable as always, and then there is Joe, who, yeah, I'll talk about him later. So the characters are all back to normal, and Phil's still fun-loving and all that, I don't believe I mentioned Phil, but Phil never really changed. And he is right on the money here. Second, no stupid character is being added to the cast. Now, while there was that Ben guy who was added in pretty late in season 8 that nobody liked, they keep him, but they make him the butt monkey because they know everybody hated him. So, for the few episodes he's in there before he gets axed off, because they make it very clear he's not coming back, they just give him the beating of a lifetime, not physically, 
sometimes but like the world just craps on him and it is great to see because the writers have become aware now we never liked the La Fontaines or Rainier Shine or even Andy we didn't like any of those people and we certainly didn't like this guy so seeing him just get demolished like this is amazing and it's hilarious like the way that they do it to him and yet he's still he's not like moping about it. he's just kind of oh dang just kind of like that his defeated attitude is really funny, but it's not depressing, not just because we don't like the character, but just his reactions to how minimalist yet over-exaggerated they are. I know that sounds very contradictory, but you just have to see the way the actor emotes. Third, the writing. The writing, I can't explain how this happened, but they got back to those jokes that they have in the first five seasons. See, let me break it down for you. Seasons 1 through 5 have the very innuendo jokes that they're very famous for, but it's also rapid fire with Mitchell's snarkiness, Jay's grumpiness, and all this stuff just playing off each other like joke after joke after joke after joke. Seasons 6, 7, and 8 decided to take one of the jokes and just kind of stretch it out and then make that a branch off for all the other jokes. Now that's fine. Shows do that. Even Modern Family did that for a while. But when that's every single joke in just about every scene, it gets old, and it, that's what causes things like flanderization. I mean, look at Fairly Odd Parents, Cosmo being stupid. Well, that was a joke in their rapid fire joke thing. But then they decided to slow that down, make it the focus of a whole bunch of things, and that would create a bunch of jokes. And then that just became his character trait, his only character trait. That happened here with like Cam's ego turning into his egotistical, malicious self. Mitchell always seeing the faults in life, to getting him to be the butt monkey, stuff like that. But they finally remembered what made the show good, and I thought it was just because they used up all the jokes. No, it's just because they changed up their writing style. And although the plots are still kind of reminiscent of the later on seasons, which is perfectly natural, I mean, you can only do so many plots. And the plots aren't bad, they're just finding new and unique ways to explore the characters. And that's pretty cool. Stuff like Phil wanting to connect with his family, we've seen that before, but floating down a river in a giant pumpkin, and then realizing that everybody's getting too old for this stuff, yet even though the kids think they're getting too old, they're really not, and they're just kind of kidding themselves. We haven't really seen that. The closest we've seen is that one with them in the RV, which this is kind of like it, but it takes it in a new direction. Or say things like Jay wanting to be remembered, we've seen that kind of stuff and him trying to pretend to be all nice and smiley, although this goes more into it, that he's afraid that everyone's just going to remember him as the cranky old guy who was never nice to anybody. Stuff like that. There's new areas they're able to explore in both the writing and just the acting, which leads me into the next part. The acting has gotten a lot better. Maybe just the actors were not impressed with the scripts that they got in the later seasons, because Especially people like Ty Burrell and Ed Harris, who were getting much better offers. I mean, they both appeared in Flying Dory, for crying out loud. They seemed way less interested in what was going on compared to earlier on. And even some of the others. The only one who was consistently excited about it seemed to be Sofia Vergara. That was it. But the acting has gotten a lot better, we're seeing a lot more interactions. The kind that, although we may have seen before, we don't get to see too much of, like Alex and Manny, for one. Or Lily and Joe, a bunch of things we haven't really seen before, although, or, in some cases, things we have seen, like Manny and Luke, but we're going into new areas with it. And the characters are becoming a lot more developed, too, that goes back to the writing. Like, Manny feels really insecure, and that sort of stuff, and Jay's realizing that his grumpiness isn't really going to help him in life. Or even the stuff that they tried to do with Alex in explaining her awful, awful human nature. But, I've said it before and I'll say it again, after season 6, Alex is unfixable. The writers have dug themselves into a hole that is way too deep, and although I commend them for fixing every other character, except Joe, but as much as I commend them for that, they cannot fix Alex. She's just gone way too far down the rabbit hole, and that's not even something the newer seasons did. Starting at season 3 or so, Alex has just been on this decline, it's just that season 6 was where it went way too far. And, of course, there was that one where she was talking with the therapist that was just atrocious, but let's talk about that some other day. So the writing is great, the characters are great, the plots are actually pretty darn good, too. Everything's falling into place. And you know what? I give them props. I said that Modern Family was entirely unfixable, especially after that awful, you shouldn't have voted for Donald Trump episode. 
You remember, right? That atrocious episode where they just talk to a feminist for 22 minutes and it's not even a real feminist. It's one of those feminists that believe that women should be superior to men and all that sort of stuff and saying, Oh, our country's going into a conservative mode. Oh, no. There's a way to get across your message, but that's not it. And I've already talked about that in nauseum, and that has nothing to do with this. But I said it was unfixable after that point. I said that the show needed to stop. Well... I'm watching the show again. I mean, I was off at college doing my work and then my dad gave me a text saying, Hey, Modern Family is actually pretty good again. Have you seen the new episodes? And I said no. And well, now that I'm home for Thanksgiving, I've been watching it nonstop. And I've been rewatching some of the old stuff because it's got me inspired again to watch the older episodes. And yes, even some of the very few good ones that were in those accursed three seasons. The show has refound itself. The show has gotten back on track, and while I wouldn't say it's as good as some of the Prime Era stuff, some of the stuff comes pretty darn close, like the lake episode I thought was very well done, the Thanksgiving one is one of the best Thanksgiving episodes they've had, and that one with Jay and Gloria's anniversary, that one was phenomenal. I don't think there's been an episode I've really disliked this season, and that's pretty good. That hasn't happened since season 4. And if I sound really knowledgeable about it, that's because I am. Not only have I been watching it a lot lately, but I've done my research. Because this is a very important show. It helped redefine the sitcom genre. While there are things like The Office and all that, that definitely helped. This one really helped with ABC, at least. But things like Blackish or The Goldbergs, I don't think any of that would have caught on if it wasn't for this. Because this helped make ABC stand out again. And it won a bunch of Emmys because of it. But... To see it still think that it was an amazing, groundbreaking show when it was just that terrible was very sad, but now it realized that it was making all those mistakes and it's doing its absolute best to correct them. While not rewriting continuity, it changes things up a bit like making Ben the butt monkey and then replacing him entirely and keeping Pamron around although sidelining her, that kind of stuff. They make up for the mistakes that they added. And I like that a lot, and apparently a lot of other people have too. The season has very high reviews on IMDb. Go check it out. Go see any of the episodes. But there are a few problems I want to talk about. Now, these aren't nitpicks. These are actual problems. Except for this first one. This first one's a little bit of a nitpick. There's a lot of nudity in this season. Granted, they blur it out, but there's a lot of it. There's like one, maybe two episodes without it, and we're like nine episodes in. Like, every episode has had it so far. And you don't need it. Once in a while, it's fine. But this one season has had more nudity than any of the other episodes of the show combined. Just a little something I want to point out. Second problem. Alex is unfixable. She's awful. Next. Joe is still bad. Now the thing is, Joe was never a character. He was a plot device. Just because Sylvia Vergara got pregnant, they had to write a baby into the show. The writers never wanted that, and they've made it very, very clear. So Joe is kind of like one of the Olsen twins from Full House, just kind of there to look precious and adorable and marketable. The thing is, though, while he's part of the main cast, he's everyone's least favorite tied with Alex. These two are the least popular characters. So what did they decide to do? They looked it back and said, hey, you know when Lily was little and she was so snarky and how adorable that was? Let's make that Joe. But here's the thing. Not only is Lily still snarky, so it doesn't serve a purpose, but... Joe still doesn't hit the mark. While they have some of the stuff that does well with when Lily says it, when Joe says it, it just doesn't feel right because they still make him talk in that precious, adorable tone. So it doesn't really come right, and it's always delivered in the same notes. And plus, we know this isn't Joe's character because Joe's character, quote unquote, the only part of it at least, is just that he's adorable and lovable in how he would say it, because he can't say ours. So now him all of a sudden acting this snarky doesn't really make any sense, and it's it's fine. I'd rather have this Joe than the other Joe. Another thing is, yes, Pamrin's still here, and her little baby Calhoun, yep, they're always talking about that. Luckily, they sideline her a ton. She's only really gotten focus in, like, two episodes. Other than that, she's been entirely forgotten, and I am very happy about that. Although, I do hope that they either find some good stuff to do with her, or preferred, give her a goodbye episode. Now, I will still want to see her, like, in the same way that we see people like Shorty or Merle, which, by the way, that Shorty episode was amazing. Probably that or the 
anniversary episode. I can't decide between the two. They're both really good. And that last one was pretty heartwarming, too. But, anyways, I, I want her to be like a character like Shorty or Merle. So, it's a character that we see sometimes, but not all the time. Speaking of which, I hope they also give her an ending that is similar to Shorty's and not similar to whoever the football guy was that Mitch and Cam took in. Yeah, that's how great that character was. I don't even remember his name, and I just saw one of the episodes he was in. That's bad. I want her to actually be written out in a way that makes sense, not just randomly disappearing. I want to see, like, what happened. But yeah, th those are all the issues. Just one nitpick and then three actual issues. One of them that can't be fixed, and then two of them that... Well, they can be fixed, but only one of them should really be fixed. And it seems like they're fixing all the issues pretty quickly. Alex is getting a little bit better, although I do say she's irredeemable. She's getting a couple steps in the right direction, as well as less screen time. With the exception of her and the whole marathon thing, that was still atrocious. Well, good to have you back, Season 6, Alex. But they're still doing everything they can to make sure the show stays good. They've got it in a good spot, and they want to keep it, I can tell. They're working absolutely hard. And this is just the early parts of the season, which usually end up being a little weaker. So I'm excited to see what comes next. Granted, season 6 and 7 had stronger beginnings, so I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but we'll have to see. You guys should go watch Modern Family again if you've stopped, because I know I certainly am. I stopped after all things being equal, and then I decided to pick up again here, and I did watch those episodes I missed out on, and yeah, they were still abysmal. But they weren't as bad knowing that the show did in fact get better. And I am very happy to say that this is true. I've said it way too much. Go on and watch it. See you guys later. And next time, we will be talking about something 4Kids related. Funky Cops, to be specific.